the true love story of Gamina and Gamel. They met one night out on the town, fell in love, and eloped, and traveled to the scenic Poconos for an adventurous honeymoon. After one night's stay, Gamel went on a hike while Gamina tanned on a lawn chair. But no, a tragedy. Gamel was mauled by a bear. Ah! So what can fix Gamel in this love story? The cell cycle. Cell cycle enables and regulates cell growth, specialization, and replication. Two processes associated with the cell cycle are mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis allows for exact duplication and then the separation of genetic material. This is vital for cell growth and repair to occur. Meiosis is equally important. Unlike mitosis, the amount of genetic material is reduced by half. Also, through genetic combination, the daughter cells are genetically unique. This allows for differences from generation to generation. Meiosis is the basis for sexual reproduction, so ultimately, it is necessary for life to continue. This chart gives an overview of the cell cycle. Interphase, which is the longest stage, encompasses G1, S phase, and G2. G1 is when the decision to begin cell division is made. In S phase, DNA is replicated and doubled. The cell prepares for mitosis or meiosis in G2. To fix Gamel's bear wounds, his cells must be repaired and replicated by mitosis. During prophase, the sister chromatids are tightly coiled and the nucleoli have disappeared. The duplicated chromosomes appear as two identical sister chromatids joined at their centromeres and by cohesions. The mitotic spindle, consisting of centrosomes and microtubules, begin to form. The smaller radial rays of shorter microtubules that extend from the centrosomes are called asters. The longest stage of mitosis that lasts about 20 minutes is metaphase. This is when the centromeres of the sister chromatids lie on the horizontal metaphase plate. The spindle has formed and each microtubule is attached at the centromeres. During anaphase, the sister chromatids separate. The individual chromosomes, each with their own centromere, move to opposite ends of the cell. The non-kinetic or microtubules lengthen and the size of the cell increases. During telophase and cytokinesis, two nucleoli reappear and the nuclear envelope begins forming from the original parent cell. The chromosomes become less condensed and the cytoplasm begins to split. The cleavage furrow, made of myosin and actin, forms and pinches the cell into two daughter cells. This cell division results in two diploid daughter cells. Now Gamel is healed! In meiosis 1, the homologous pairs separate. In prophase 1, chromosomes first condense and then crossing over occurs. This exchange of genetic information happens between non-sister chromatids of different homologous pairs. The point where they cross is called a chiasmata. The chromosomes are held together in synapsis, which is a state where proteins bind the chromosomes. Finally, the spindle fibers form, the nuclear envelope breaks down, centrosomes move to opposite ends, and the microtubules attach to the two kinetic cores of the two homologs. In metaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes are lined up at the metaphase plate in the middle of the cell. The kinetic core attaches each set of sister chromatids in the homologous pair to microtubules. This is in preparation for separation. In anaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes separate. They are pulled apart in opposite directions by the microtubules towards the centrosomes. However, the sister chromatids remain attached and move together. In telophase 1 and cytokinesis, two haploid cells are produced by a cleavage furrow in animal cells and by cell plate formation in plant cells. Division of the cytoplasm occurs, and each cell has an equal number of genetically mixed chromosomes. The sister chromatids are still attached. Unlike meiosis 1, meiosis 2 separates sister chromatids. In the following slides, the second cell produced in meiosis 1 is pictured in the upper right-hand corner. In prophase 2, spindle fibers begin to form and the chromosomes move towards the metaphase plate. In metaphase 2, the sister chromatids each have their own kinetic cores attached to the microtubules and are aligned in the center. They are ready for separation. In anaphase 2, the sister chromatids are separated and pulled towards opposite ends of the cell. Finally, in telophase 2 and cytokinesis, both the cells resulting from meiosis 1 split into 2, producing four daughter cells that are genetically unique from each other and their parent cell. The four cells produced in meiosis are haploid. Once again, the cell cycle helps our gummy friends. Gamine and Gamel's baby is on the way, and this kind of sexual reproduction is enabled by meiosis. In meiosis, genetic variation occurs by crossing over, and this does not occur in mitosis. Another difference is that during metaphase 1, the chromosomes are positioned on the metaphase plate as pairs of homologs rather than individual chromosomes as they are in mitosis during metaphase. So, meiosis and mitosis are both important. And look, Gamina and Gamel's new baby, Gamitri! 
Dmitri, you have a lot to learn about the cell cycle when you attend Lafayette College.